Well, hello there and welcome to the Bathroom of the Dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for November 29th, the Day of the Instigator. Oh, all right, Day of the Instigator. Here at the top of the page, we have us a visual representation, if you like, of the Day of the Instigator. Can you guess what it is? Well, I bet you can't, because this one surprised me. Boom, let's see if we can get it to focus. It's like an empowered fist holding up a spur. That's right, uh, a boot spur. Quite sharp, too, by the looks of it. Is that an adequate uh, representation of the Day of the Instigator? Who's to say? Maybe we'll make some connotations as we get on further with the read. Just wanted you to have an idea of what I'm seeing as I have here on the page. But in any event, not altogether all too important, the visual representational image there. What is important, however, is it's November 29th, and hence it's somebody's birthday. That's right. Is it your birthday? Well, if it is, I just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday. That's right. But if this finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may be, you're probably a busy individual instigating folks, I imagine. Well, if that's the case, I just want to say, I hope you had a happy birthday. But for everybody else who's joining us randomly, or more ideally, to celebrate the November 29th birthday, well, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the redirect, real quick, I'd like to roll some dice around these here parts and live up to the namesake. This is the diecast, a birthday broadcast, so let's do as much. But I do so more importantly, for synchronicity's sake, I almost dropped one here. We gotta roll again. All right, there we go. What did I roll? Oh, a four and a two, four a six. That's right. Now, what is synchronicity? You're probably wondering. Well, it's just you getting out in the world and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you do that by uh, formulating a mutually agreed upon a waypost or a sign, if you like, by which to go out looking for. And you know what? What better than some numbers. That's right. You're two and you're four for a six. Now you can roll your own number. Uh, go with the, your own uh, agreement with the universe there. Uh, the intention's here with mine, but you know what? You can do your own thing. But that being said, regardless of whether you use my number or your own, it's probably advisable you take a set of dice so you can ascribe uh, directional values to number sets and time limits with which to go in those directions. But that being said, once you pick your point to leave from, maybe the town square, say, and you get your dice, you get your numbers, you get your direction and your time limit, you set out. That's right, but you, you stay eagle-eyed for your signs, and not just your signs anomalies too. Anything that strikes the mood to say, hey, that seems like the universe is just calling out to me. It's too often we get out in the world and we got the blinders on, you know what I mean? We're very narrow a focus as we get after our uh, respective errands, right? And so this whole thing is an exercise in taking those blinders down. It's like when somebody mentions a car or something and you start seeing them all over the place. That's right. They were always there. You were just blind to it. So here, I'm just hoping that we can... Uh, open our eyes to what the universe might be putting in our path without us even realizing it. And here, since we got the intention out there for as much, well, you know what? Even stronger uh, connection, I would argue. But anything you set out, once you reach maybe the end of your time limit, you stop, compose yourself, and you stay eagle-eyed for your signs. That's right, you're four and you, or you're two for a six. Maybe the old number f uh, six bu or 24 bus pulls up right in front of you. You know what? You may not ride the bus ever. But hey, why don't you get on that? That's what this day is all about, broadening our horizons. And maybe you just so happen to have perfect change in your pocket for as much. Or or maybe you found a bus ticket that still has some uh, tokenage on it, or whatever you call it. Some fare, if you like. And you know what? That'd be a huge synchronous thing right there. You found a ticket, you get on the bus, and you know what? Maybe it runs out right about the time you run into... A boom, the 42 bus stop, or the 40, I don't know what the things are called. And number 42, that's right. So you know what? Get off of there. Follow those numbers. That's right. Now, maybe you get off the bus, though, and there's no numbers to be seen. You're out there in the middle of uh, basically nothing. I don't know, maybe downtown, and there's just, there's nothing around, you know. Uh, newspapers swirling in, in the wind and the, and the like, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? Just stay patient. Maybe look for some anomalies. You know what? Start looking up at the buildings. Maybe you just so happen to see, I don't know, an empowered fist holding up some horseshoe or some uh, <laughs> some boot spurs, if you like. 
I don't know if that's the case. Maybe start heading in that direction because you know what? That is your visual representation. You get what I'm saying here? You're looking for things that the universe is just throwing in your path. And uh, when you do chase after these things, it's bound to start showing you things that are just otherwise magical, all right? Um, and so I'm hoping for you that you can get out there and see, taste, touch, feel, maybe even smell a little bit of that magic. Hopefully it smells decent, all right? <laughs> not, not one of them alleyways in which you might pick up from there, that hot, sweet garbage, if you like. But you know what? If the dice lead you down there, go right for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, use your best instincts there. If you see some people down there, you know, shooting the craps and they've got some dodgy looks to them, I don't know, maybe don't do it, but also, Use your best judgment. Sometimes you meet those folks, they ask you, what are you doing down here in our alleyway? You know what? Just tell them, hey, I'm here on a synchronicity walk. And they're like, what are you talking about? Maybe you show them this video and the and the old derelict gentleman, uh, derelict is the wrong word, but the, uh, the, uh, the vagabond, if you like, he goes, that's crazy. And you go, well, I know, right? And he goes, no, 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 not the whole method of madness. It's my birthday, too. And you're like, whoa. So you know what? Maybe you just met yourself a new friend. Even though he's kind of decrepit and he shoots the craps to make some spare change instead of picking up cans like every other derelict, <laughs> derelict every other vagabond who's out there, who's to say? Maybe you guys hit the local soup kitchen, share some tales, share some chicken noodle. You know what I'm saying? You just made your new friend. Who's to say? And maybe he's a secret millionaire and he just happens to bestow you with his estate because you showed him a kindness. Yeah, he just shoots the craps because that's how he gets his entertainment in those alleyways that smell like, oh, sweet hot garbage. Who's to say? But I'm saying that's the kind of thing you never know what might line up for you unless you get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. In any event, hey, that's been Synchronicity. Let's dive in with your birthday read. Your month is November, your day the 29th. Your sign is 6 to 8 degrees Sagittarius of the Sagittarius 1 period specifically. And your quality and elements is mutable fire. All right, let's get into it here. November 29th, the day of the instigator. Those born on November 29 have a knack for provoking others, sometimes to thought and other times to conflict. They like to stir up the pot, and usually their presence alone uh, leads to some change in the status quo. Sometimes branded as troublemakers, they are not overly concerned with what others think of them. November 29, people know how to push emotional buttons, and they can get great mileage out of a cutting comment, a raised eyebrow, or a telling silence. They may in fact regard themselves as watchdogs of truth, and woe to anyone who presumes to depart from it! Exclamation point. Their capacity to punish such transgressors can be frightening. And since they know exactly where and when to strike, they must beware, however, that just punishment does not turn sadistic and lose its underlying integrity. November 29 people may not contribute so much to the stability of social or political institutions, but they certainly keep them honest and on their toes. And in their personal life, those born on this day do tend to hang in there and can actually provide security for their family and friends in the long run. They are a bit like a stationary hurricane, whirling around but not necessarily leaving anytime soon. And those who dare to enter the hurricane's eye can be sure that they will be protected from harmful outside influences. The person who suffers most ordinarily from the label emotions and unsettled feelings of a November 29 person is that person, him or herself. They must, uh, they may rather cause trouble for others, but it is difficult to imagine what it is like to be under their skin. And this feeling of being uncomfortable with themselves and at the mercy of their own internal process is one of which more perceptive people can see in them. And as far as ambition and drive are concerned, November 29 people are usually far too busy with everyday matters and their own personal problems to think about conquering the world. 
socially and career-wise, they often reach a certain level and stay there. However, through their talent for surviving attacks, they may be able to go on wielding their provocative influences for quite a long time. If there is a danger that they will be deposed from their perch, it is most likely from colleagues who grow tired of wrestling with them over matters of contention. The same thing may be true of patient mates as well as friends who eventually figure that life would be a lot simpler, albeit more boring, without their uh, contentiousness. And if November 29 people wish to have a happier life, they must learn to be a bit less provocative and sometimes let things run their own course. All right, how about that for a birthday breakdown? Oh, pretty interesting, I would say. So, hey, uh, I like to take a moment here and dive into some notes, provide a little bit of a commentary, if you like, on what we just read. Maybe make some uh, connections, connotations with previous days, periods, and the like. So let's see what I had to say here. November 29, the day of the instigator. All right, you ready? Uh, let's see, a knack for provoking others. All right, and sometimes to thought, other times to conflict, the reading said. Action too, I would imagine, as I think it's assuming to imagine it's just the bad things that instigation does, right? Uh, to instigate. It's got a real negative connotation a lot of times, but I don't think that's necessarily the case all the time, all right? Uh, it's surely something that you could rise to. That's right. Instigating uh, the best out of somebody. All right. Uh, but you're sometimes branded as troublemakers otherwise. All right. But not overly concerned with what others think. So, hey, maybe that doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, or you think of it as a, a source of pride, right? A, a red badge of courage or honor, if you like. Uh, but both realities having a bit of a through line in this period, actually, uh, as it turns out. People seeking the truth and being troublemakers, I mean. Uh, the reading furthers that you can get mileage out of a cutting comments. Also, your silence and maybe just a glare, right? Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, which makes me think that when I repeat a joke that didn't get a laugh the first time, all right? That's what it makes me think of. And you try it again and you feel just as silly the second time all right it's not the same but uh, i would argue stopping while you're ahead lest you put yourself behind still an apt consideration all right uh, especially if you lend credence to this idea of savvying yourself a watchdog of truth that's right stop while you're ahead or unless you're kind of defeating the purpose i would say all right, what else do we have here? Uh, but apparently you know how to strike out at transgressors of truth to the point of being compared to a stationary hurricane. All right. A natural calamity that's come up as a comparison for several people in this period already. Uh, but the stationary aspect is unique to you. Um, it's also kind of a contrasting dynamic to as much. Uh, I assume the authors didn't want to repeat themselves too much there. Uh, that said, the reading relates to you may be the one who suffers the most from emotions and unsettled feelings uh, with regard to your exploits. All right. Uh, so uh, your process seemingly corrosive to all concerned. I'd say that's an apt argument for being on the constructive side of your instigation. All right. Uh, you positively aim as much uh, to that end. And uh, you know what? The feelings that you get, if this is a true dynamic, are going to be better, all right, instead of the negative stuff, especially if it affect, affects you worse than the folks that you're aiming it at. Um, that said, uh, it says you have problems uh, with drive and ambition, or you don't have any uh, to which, uh, um, because you're you're too busy with your own, your own concerns, right? Um, but you know what? If you're fine with that, hey, more power to you, all right? I know plenty of people who couldn't be happier with where they are and who reject the very idea of promotion. They don't want all the extra responsibility. And sometimes it's with an organization that, you know what? They don't want to be helping out anyway. They just want to collect their paycheck and get on with their day. And you know what? Like I said, more power to you. Can't fault that by any, by any regard there. Because sometimes taking on an extra money means extra stress and uh, calamity in your own life there. So, hey, if that's not something you're down for, more power to you, like I said. Uh, let's see here. What else? 
Uh, the idea, okay, but if that is you, if it isn't you, food for thought, uh, if it is, food for thought, that's right, you might just be able to lean in to not going after those things. It might behoove you, who's to say? Uh, by and large, this is a rather narrowly focused breakdown, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's very focused on just that instigation part and how that kind of uh, affects your whole life there. Um, but it's a very interesting dynamic to be sure. As soon as I saw it, I was a little jealous because I savvy myself a little bit of an instigator too. And my title isn't anyway close to that. Uh, but that being said, they, a lot of times when the, with the well-rounded reads, in my opinion, they dive into family life and uh, maybe even how you, how you react to children and your own kids or how their kids, how you act as kids yourselves, um, and how you can develop it as much, or they focus on the lesser and the more evolved, but, uh, they didn't really do that here. So I was a little disappointed in that regard because sometimes it's nice to see what we can do or, um, how our lives might play out further winnow it down to be more specific they did however present some problems you might face and they gave you some solutions so uh there was some added value in that respect i would say that being said that's what i'd say about the birthday breakdown let's move on to your numbers and your planets all right those born on the 29th of the month are ruled by the number two as two plus nine equals eleven and one plus one well, that equals two. All right. And by the moon. And since those ruled by the number two are often good co-workers and partners rather than leaders, the book says, this quality helps the more difficult of November 29 people in terms of embodying ideals of their family or their work group. However, it may also act as a break on their individual initiative and action, uh, producing frustration. And this may be underlined by the moon's strongly reflective and passive tendencies. A connection between the moon and Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, can convey a strong character and a tendency to not judge others, but also to reveal their motives. And the secondary number, 11, as 2 plus 9 is 11, lends a feeling for the physical plane as well as a possible interest in twins, symmetry, and doubles of all kinds. All right. Hey, this was a somewhat uh, personalized numbers and planets here. Um, and I, I figured they kind of had to do that because of this Jupiter moon dynamic. I think it's the first time it's come up since I started reading. Uh, so let's see what I had to say here. I was a bit excited going into this one, if I'm being honest. Uh, the number two in the moon for good co-worker partner dynamic versus leaders, uh, which there seems to be some conflict in terms of the breakdown, in my opinion, uh, considering the uh, they may grow tired of your shenanigans dynamic. You might not make the best co-workers, that's, that being said. Uh, I would also argue that there's a huge leadership component to this day to some extent if not in a role model quality found in uh, being an agent of truth uh, then there's uh, what do you call um, uh, it's it's not necessarily apparent but it's the fact that you've got this self-confidence just in spades to get out there instigate be the agent of truth and I would say that's not only admirable that's a huge leadership quality even if you only reserve it for yourself um, others they might take that as an example for better or for worse, right? Uh, that said, for those of you trying to blaze a more contemporary leadership route, which, you know, the other way really isn't if you're instigating things, um, you might face some frustrations on account of uh, what do you call Jupiter and the moon, a little bit of a conflict there. Uh, because J Jupiter is the planet of coming out on top, the expansive planet there. It also imparts luck and optimism and a few other things. Um, so there might be a little bit of conflict there because the rise to be on top versus someone who's passive or um, reflective in a way. Yeah, it's like I said, I was interested to see what was going to happen here. Um, what else have we got here? But uh, I can see some of that coming in, into contention with the moon and such. Uh, so... Maybe that's something to look into, or maybe to understand if you face a lot of frustrations in that department. So maybe dive into the astrology angle, if that's something you're uh, at least curious about. Uh, like I said, I don't know too much about it. I just go by what's here in the book and what I've put together from past readings. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully I've sparked your interest to some extent with all of that. With that being said, that's been your numbers and your planets. Let's move on 
to your tarot. That's right, one of the more eclectic of the new age bet physical ideologies. But you know what? It's here in the book. It's your birthday. We're taking the blinders off. We can leave it here in the book. We don't have to take it home and start dealing out the cards now, do we? Predict our future or whatever. Instigate some kind of metaphysical happening or manifest, maybe. Who's to say? Uh, but in any event, let's get into it, all right? The tarot. The second card of the major arcana is the priestess, shown seated on her throne, calm and impenetrable. She is a spiritual woman who reveals hidden forces and secrets, and empowering us with that knowledge. Favorable qualities of this card are silence, intuition, reserve, and discretion. The negative values are secretiveness, mistrust, iner indifference, and inertia. I read ahead a little bit there. Uh, the Priestess. This, was, this one was a total copy-paste job, and sometimes that's where the, uh, the trade-off is. If they personalize their numbers and planets, they don't add much to the tarot. Uh, that being said, this one didn't really seem to line up at first. I had to kind of think about it. And sometimes they don't. Uh, the other day, they really didn't. It was kind of an example of what people should lean into <laughs> because it wasn't them at all. But here's what I have to say here. The priestess, a spiritual woman who reveals hidden forces and secrets, all right, and empowers us with said knowledge. Uh, and I don't know what secret knowledge you may be imparting, if you were to take this writ large, but in instigating a look into or for the truth, I'd say this card speaks to what the breakdown conveyed. And if instigation isn't the empowerment of another, uh, for better or worse, I don't know what the definition of it is. That's right, there's, there's power in that, instigating someone else. Um, what else do we have? Uh, glaring contradiction insofar as the positives are concerned, and we compare it to the breakdown for silence, intuition, and reserve. Unless you're using that silence to instigate, I would say. Um, and that, uh, in, you know, you might be the expert instigator in those regards. You don't even have to say anything and you can get people to, to stir things up for you. Uh, but, you know, you stirred them up there by, uh, what do you call it, indirectly. That's right. You were the root of the cause. They just didn't know it. That's the expert there. Uh, that means said, mind indifference or inertia because instigation, by my read, requires action and purpose. You know, an inertia that sets in. You get that weight sitting down, it's hard to get back up. You got to be moving. Indifference, hey, you got to have an opinion, right, to start up some kind of instigation. Yeah, so watch the negatives and the positives, like I said. Uh, they didn't really seem to relate, but I thought that there was that power in empowering other people to do other things. So I thought it was a somewhat apt card, even if it didn't quite seem like it. I just had to think about it for a bit. And even that's been your tarot, let's move on. To your health. That's right, your health. November 29, people must beware of ultimately upsetting themselves most of all. They can overwork their nervous systems through anxiety and subsequent depressions. Maintaining a stable psychological state is probably their greatest health challenge. Also, they may suffer a physical imbalance, particularly if their hormone systems, to say the endocrine, thyroid, and sexual, get out of whack, it says, phrasing there. Uh, an, interesting, uh, an interest in cooking and healthy attitude toward food, stressing fresh fruits, vegetables, and grains while eschewing excess sugar and fatty dairy products as well as de-emphasizing red meat will help them enormously surprising here in that regard I'll, I'll tell you here in a minute why rather strenuous physical exercise and an active sex life can be good for grounding and directing tumultuous energies Oh, a different kind of instigation there. All right. Uh, let's see what I did say about your health here. Um, beware upsetting yourself. Okay, I found this element most interesting. The ultimate power affecting you more than your targets. All right, is also uh, the point that the authors drilled down on. Uh, and, and the fact that they put it in the health section too. It's pretty important in my mind. Uh, which up until the Scorpio uh, period of the Zodiac, I don't think they really mentioned psychological issues. But through Scorpio, it just started getting hammered home, more so than uh, exercise and diet. And before that, exercise and diet was like one of the mainstays of the health section. 
for you, they give attention to that here too, surprisingly. There's no sacrifice of, of them, uh, which they don't often round out that well, uh, to be honest. So uh, keep your mental welfare in good standing um, and beware of those hormone imbalances. I think that's the first time they've mentioned that. So with that being said, hey, maybe take note of as much because um, if they're just going to put it in here once or twice in the book, there must be a reason. Though they don't say why. There's no context. There's also no context for that very hyper-focused diet. But I would say uh, a lot of times that lands with a Mars day, and the Mars is the god of war, the anger and aggression. And I think the red meat and those other kind of foods, they try to like get you away from that because ostensibly it helps drive up the anger and such. I think they called them yang foods in a couple other days, but here nor there. That's why I mentioned it. They gave you a Mars diet, like what I like to call it. So I don't know why they might have done that. You had the moon and Jupiter, Mars factors in there somehow, but maybe I'm totally off base. Again, I'm not an astrologist or by any, any stretch of the imagination. Uh, that said, uh, they said to stay grounded with your earthy foods your, uh, and your strenuous physical lifestyle and an active sex life, all right? Again, that one doesn't get brought up all too often either. So you need some kind of release, it sounds like. Uh, with lifting weights, I mean. All right, anyway, that's been your health, so let's move on to some advice. All right, sometimes it may be a good idea to reserve your judgments and your moral evaluations. Calm yourself, all right? And learn to quietly stand aside and observe without expressing your opinion. And make use of your capacity for changing the environment in a positive way. All right, I think I said that too there at the beginning. I do this chronologically, so sometimes I get a good guess in there. Uh, so what I have to say about your advice, I had uh, ran out of space in the notebook, so I had to put it in a book here. Blasphemy, right? Let's get it. Uh, reserve your judgments, okay? The truth, uh, you, okay, the truth is you aren't the ethical authority, okay? Maybe moral, because morals are about you. Uh, but uh, you're not the center of the universe. Not the universe. Maybe your own, but not the universe. That's right. So reserve your moral judgments. Say, you know what? You can do whatever you like with your morals because that's about you. But your ethics, I'd say reserve those because that's about society at large. You can have opinions. Keep them to yourself. That's right. Okay, what else do we have here? Calm yourself. Okay, I could take that advice, couldn't I? Only the hurricane can do so, I'm, I'm guessing, all right? And learn to observe without expressing. That means without the instigating wink or the look that you throw at folks to get them to uh, do your bidding, right? Uh, so to speak, or just cause a kerfuffle or whatnot. Uh, this is change the environment positively. All right, I like, like I said at the top there, all right? You can instigate for the better not just for conflict. And you know what, like I said earlier too, I arrived at it after the notes. You know what, uh, it might help if you're going for the positives with your own emotional well-being. That's right, because I said you suffer the most at your own, at your own actions. So, a little bit of guilt there perhaps, who's to say. But in any event, that's been your advice. So let's move on to your meditation. That's right, let's take the energy down. I'll calm myself, I'll take your advice here. <laughs> Emotions can be calmed with the breath. Oh, we're talking about calmness and, and you know what? Synchronicity. That's right. You're four and you're two for six. All right. Once again, emotions can be calmed with the breath. All right. That's your meditation. It's your birthday. So I'm not going to throw some spin on it, even though it seems pretty, uh, you know, right over the plate there. But yeah, that's just for you. It's your birthday. So I'll leave that with you. But your meditation having been conveyed, let's move on to your strengths and weaknesses. That's right. Let's find out where we're strong, where we've got all the, uh, the traits that help us get along in this world. But then let's also find out the ones that are holding us back. All right. Your strengths. You're provocative, all right. You're dynamic, and you're influential, all right. But your weaknesses, ooh, can you guess what they are? I'm sure they've probably been gone over to some extent. Now let's hold up that objective mirror, but flip it to the side, but the mirror that blows up your face, shows off all the pock marks that you, from all the scabs you were picking when you were young, right? And the chicken pox that you got there, if that wasn't clear. All right, your weaknesses. You're troubled 
Ah, you're disturbing and you're stressed out. You're stressed. Oh, troubled keeps coming up here. You know, it started off with Scorpio and it was just a through line. It's like every other day was troubled. And then sometimes it was bam, 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 bam. And it keeps coming through on Sagittarius. So interesting. I don't think any other uh, weakness has gotten repeated that much. Any event, troubled, distressed, or disturbing and stressed. You know what? I would say provocative, dynamic, influential. Those are all things that you can couple together and synthesize into beating back those weaknesses, or at least bringing them down, right? Figuring out, I mean, they're a party. You got to own them, I would say, but you know what? You can lessen them. That's right. Uh, you're dynamic. That one's huge, all right? Uh, that being said, those are your strengths and weaknesses. Deal with them as you like. Let's move on to those born on this day. That's right. When we get into those born on this day, not only get to see who shares your company, but something I like to do is examine the idea of figuring out our passions. That's right. Too often I get out in the world and meet folks, ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. But you can't blame folks. There's no time to put into work to figure those kind of things out these days. Or if there is, you're distracted by everything. Or maybe you just got into a job that you don't necessarily like, but you know what? You gotta, you gotta keep it in order to put money in the account, keep a roof over your head, keep those bed sheets clean on the weekends. Hey, there's no time to put into work to figure out your passions. Or if you do know what your passions are, maybe you know how to make them financially viable. So I figured this is the perfect opportunity to not only maybe draw up sp some inspiration from those who share your company, see what they did to get their mark on the world. Um, you know what, maybe me just talking about as much, figuring out your passions can put the bug in your ear about it, get you to stir up the fires if you like. I know it's probably a, a hard sell to listen to what other folks did to, uh, you know, uh, get their mark on the world. But like I said, maybe it's just a way for us to take some inspiration. So let's go into that with that being the aim. Let's get it. We start off with Adam Clayton Powell Jr., a U.S. congressman that says Harlem clergyman and a civil rights leader. We also have Louisa May Alcott, a 19th century novelist of Little Women and a Civil War nurse, as well as a daughter of Amos Bronson, whoever that is. And we also have Amos Bronson Alcott. How about that? They, this happens sometimes, believe it or not. 19th century transcendentalist philosopher and a communer for, or a commune for the fruit lands, it says. We also have C.S. Lewis, the British critic of the allegory love, the allegory of love, rather, and the novelist of the Narnia series. He threw me with the British critic. I knew he did the Narnia thing. We also have Barry Gordy, a songwriter and record producer, and it says Talma Motown founder, also the first all-black record company. There you go. Maybe start off a uh, instigate yourself into a record deal there. Start your own record company. We have Jean Martin Charcot, a French uh, neurologist, and she defined hysteria. Was that a woman? Jean Martin? Could be Jean or John. I'm not quite sure. Could be a gentleman, like I said. But they defined hysteria, not the Def Leppard song, I'm imagining. We also have Jacques uh, Chirac, a French prime minister and Paris mayor. We also have Marcel Francois Lefebvre, um, L E F E B V R E. You can imagine why I can't pronounce that. A Roman Catholic archbishop and led schism against church liberation, uh, or liberalization rather, and excommunicated. Oh, how about that for instigating something? And against the church, no less. Ooh, a ballsy, I would say. All right, we have a Bugsby Berkeley, Hollywood choreographer and director of dance music spectacles. It says, uh, gold diggers of 1935 is something they were a part of. We also have Petra Kelly, uh, German Green Party leader, James Rosenquist, a pop artist painter, or Rosenquist perhaps, Paul Simon, U.S. Senator of Illinois, not the singer-songwriter, doesn't sound like, Elmo R. Zumwalt, U.S. Navy head and an admiral, uh, Gitano Dazianetti, a Donizetti, perhaps, <laughs> Italian opera composer. We also have Y.T. Lee, a U.S. Nobel Prize winning chemist of reaction dynamics fame. 
We also have John Mayall, a blues singer and a composer. Sir Philip Sidney, Elizabethan poet and a courtier, a courtier perhaps. Uh, Chuck Mana uh, Mangione, a jazz trumpeter and a flugelhornist and a composer. We had a flugelhornist the other day, maybe yesterday, the day before. I still don't know what it is. I didn't look it up. And we uh, finish off with <laughs> phrasing there, Gary Shandling, the comedian and TV personality. And that has been those born on this day. Like I said, I know it's probably a big ask, a tall order to take inspiration, or figure out your passions from somebody else's uh, life's work, so to speak. And even though it's just been kind of, uh, what do you call it, nutshelled in there. But like I said, maybe me putting the bug in your ear can help you uh, figure out, fuel your own fires. Because you know what? There's nothing better than jumping out of bed, doing backflips to get into your day. And I would argue that if you're going after your passions, that's going to be the most, um, the, the straightest avenue to doing as much. That's right. Because you don't want to just uh, tolerate life. You want to flourish. You want to find it fulfilling. And so if I can hope for you for anything on your birthday, it's that. Something fulfilling in your life. Not just instigating folks ostensibly, all right? But you know what? Maybe that's your passion. Maybe you can get after it in some dynamic way that makes you the money. That's right. In the event, that being said, those born in this day haven't been related. That essentially rounds out your birthday read. Except to say, your season is fall. Your sign, once again, is Sagittarius. Of the Sagittarius 1 period specifically, and your quality and elements is mutable fire. And what's that mean? Well, that's a different video altogether. I'll leave it at the end there for you if you're interested. That being said, this has been November 29th, the day of the instigator. I don't know that we made a correlation with the horseshoe and the empowered fist holding it up, but you know what? Quite the image altogether in any event. It's, it's quite the image altogether otherwise. Uh, some other connective word that makes that make sense. That being said, this has been The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking yourself up a copy. Save you the hassle half and type it in in the browser there and it'll help support the channel and the bargain, which I appreciate. But that being said, that's not what's important here. What's important here, wishing you a happy birthday. All right. So, uh, Happy birthday once again. Um, and for everybody else who joined us uh, randomly or more ideally to celebrate, like I said at the top, hey, I hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. That being said, finally, lest I forget your daily numbers. Your two and your four for a six. Get out there, meet the vagabond or whatever that it happens to manifest as. See, taste, touch, feel, maybe even smell the magic. And if you do, I'm telling you, you're going to understand why I brought it up in the first place. That's right. Got to do something fun on your birthday, all right? And that doesn't just mean getting the book. You know, I mean, it does work great for a coffee table and if you're going to have some company over getting the ice broken. But you know what? You got to have fun for yourself too, am I right? Am I right, instigator? I think I am. But you know what? That's for you to decide. That's right. So any event, once more, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.